Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tom Spikemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. For the past 10 weeks now, I've been going through online distance learning like many people around the world. Within my recent Bitmoji interactive classroom tutorial, a few people asked me how I created my online collaborative reading record. So this video is going to share how I made that reading record and how you can make something similar with your class. As we know as teachers, reading is so important for children. However, due to some of the pressures from other subjects with online distance learning, sometimes reading takes a bit of a backseat. So this online reading record really supports that accountability for reading with your class and also gives the children the opportunity to hear their other classmates speak and read too. This works really well with Google Classrooms or Seesaw, but if you don't have those platforms set up, then this is also a great strategy too. It's also free, which is another huge plus. So let's jump into what my interactive reading record looks like at the moment so that then we can talk about how you can make one too. So this is the interactive Bitmoji classroom that I created for my class and the children really enjoy it. If you're looking at this, thinking, oh, how do I make something like this? I have a range of different tutorials available on my channel that you can click through. So lots of people were asking about this thing here, the reading record. So let's click on this link to see what it looks like. As I'm sure you'll understand, I can't share the one that I'm using with my class for child protection reasons and safeguarding things like that. So this is one that I've just created for the purpose of this tutorial. It says online reading record, as you can see up here, this is just the title and little description. I've got a custom icon that I'm going to show you how to create up in the top left-hand corner up here. Now, in this corner here, we've got our dates going from Monday all the way through to Friday. Then our actual posts are posted in a range of different media formats. This one here is a picture that I uploaded through the website. This one here is a picture that I've uploaded through the website and I took on the website. This one here is a video of me reading the book. And I'm going to show you how you can upload videos of different sizes. And we're gonna look at different things like that. Then this is a voice note of me reading the book. And this, as you can just see, is just normal text. So we're going to look at a range of different things that you can upload through Padlet. And I'm sure by now, lots of teachers out there are already getting really creative by the ways that they're going to be able to use this with their class, thinking of all sorts of different ways. If you create something like this, please share it with me. I'd love to see all your different ideas. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Thomas Blakemore, the same as this YouTube channel. So let's look into the actual tutorial part, showing you how you can make something similar. So when you sign up for Padlet, this is what you're going to be greeted with, something that looks very similar to this. You can look at the Padlets up in this corner. You can see the one that I've just shared with you here. Up in the top left-hand corner here, you'll see some tabs, and we're going to look at those there. Now, I'm going to only look at the things that you will need to make the online reading record. There's so much functionality and flexibility with Padlet, but if I looked at everything in this video, it would be absolutely huge. So I'm not going to do that. So as I said before, you can make three free Padlets with the free version, and you can upload files up to the size of 10 megabytes. If you go for the premium version, that is actually free until the end of July. Now that gives you the flexibility to create unlimited amount of Padlets and upload video files or files in general that are 250 megabytes. Now, I'm not affiliated with Padlet, but I thought that offer was quite good. The fact that it's free until the end of July so that you can have that accessibility until fingers crossed things change. So let's look at how we make a Padlet. To start off with, we're going to click up in this top left-hand corner for make a Padlet. There's all sorts of different things that we, we can have here. Wall is great for spreading out different ideas. Stream is very similar to a, a seesaw in the way things are organized. You've got map here. Now that's really good for our humanities lessons, specifically geography, but we're going to look at the shelf version here. So we'll select that. So this is our reading Padlet, the shelf version, and this is what you'll be greeted with straight away. You can see it says that the default is my fierce Padlet and made with creative frenzy for the description. I love the overuse of adjectives through Padlet and as and when you come to use it, you'll see what I mean. So for the title, we're just going to call it reading record. And for the description, this is where you can add in questions. You could add in maybe something you want to focus on this week. So whether it's make a summary of the book that you're reading each day or 
let's only focus on non-fiction books, whatever you want to go for, but we're just going to put read under here. And icon, now you saw that I had a Spongebob icon, and we'll look at that in a second. Now you might wanna look for the reading icon along all these different ones here. You can click through the tabs up in the corner. We're gonna click on add your own, now this is where Padlet is really powerful. Search images. If I search for book, you're going to come up with lots of different things. So I could have the reading icon as that, or if I try that again and go to add or your own, search images, go to GIFs, read and record, you've got all sorts of funny GIFs that you could add in. And uh, for this one, we're going to put, let's put the cat reading the book because that's funny. Wallpaper, similarly, you can start to look at solid colors. So just keep things nice and simple with a solid color or textures, patterns, pictures. There's some preloaded pictures up here or you can add your own. And again, you've got that search images which uses Google. You can upload, you can take a photo if you wanted to put a selfie in there or you could uh, draw. Now, one thing to know about me is I'm not good at drawing, so there you are, look, we've got ourselves a really badly drawn smiley face as the, the background, but we're not gonna have that. We're going to have our background as reading. And will just have a range of different books as our background. So as and when it loads up, that's what you'll be greeted with. So things are starting to look quite nice. Down here, we've got color scheme, which is quite straightforward. Font, I like this font just because it looks a bit more child friendly. Attribution, if your children sign up with a Google account, then it will have the author name above it. I like to click that one so that I can keep account of who's loading what. New post position, this means that when they upload it, is the, the post going to be the first thing that uploads at the top or is it going to be down at the bottom? I just leave it as default. Comments, now, this is up to your discretion. You can ask the children to put in comments, but we've had, we've, I've struggled sometimes with some of the comments, either getting the children to write comments or write the correct ones. And this is where you sometimes have little problems. So it's up to you if you choose to use the comments, it's up to you. Reactions, now this is pretty cool. The children can like posts if they choose to, but keep in mind if you enable this, then children sometimes see it as a bit of a social media and focus on likes and dislikes rather than the actual content. So I just leave it off. Require approval. Now this depends on your level of activity. We've got require a moderator to approve. So that's you as the moderator. If you click on that, then if anyone needs to add something, you're gonna get a notification. You're going to be able to enable those to come out and filter profanity. Well, it's just a given really. So we'll do that. And then we've got that saved and it's closed. Now to create the actual columns, then we're just going to name these Monday, Tuesday, and you get the idea. So now we have the dates at the top. What we're going to look at is adding our content. You can see the different things going on here. Now, if we press the add button, we've got the children who are able to add in a title and write something. Now, if I put um, book front cover, you might ask the children on the first day just to add in the, the front cover. Now, if you've got something like Google Classrooms or Seesaw, you might give that as an assignment on the Monday to say, add in the, the front cover, or again, I'll leave that for your discretion. So book front cover, and you're going to add in, you've got a range of options up here. This one here is an upload. So let's say the child takes a photo on their phone or through their camera webcam, then they can upload it there. They can link a website or a, an image. This is what I tend to use, and that's the, the Google. So if we choose Harry Potter, and we'll upload the front cover for Harry Potter there. And I've used that feature there. Another way that you can upload information, if we just call this one day two, and we can write things we don't have to, is this little button here. Now, you'll see all sorts of different things start to pop up. You've got snap, so take a photo from your camera, 
and that's going to open up the camera, the webcam on your laptop or whatever you're on, and you're going to be able to take a photo through the website, which is really good. So then you can take a photo. In addition, I could then film myself. Now, here's the advantage of having a slightly longer film upload. If you've got that premium version is that you can start to upload those things there. So if we press film, then I can film all sorts of bits and pieces using this here. You record it, then you just upload it quite straightforward to do that. That's where you then get asked the children to read with their book. You've also got screen so if the children have got something on their screen that they want to read then they can do that that's great for ebooks uh, then you've also got voice where if the children aren't feeling so overly confident they can just record their voice and upload it that way and then they've got draw children don't tend to use that one but there's all sorts of different ways that the children can upload information so for now let's just do a voice one so that you can see that Hello, I'm recording my pretend book review. Play back and save, and then you're going to save it. And it takes a little bit of time just to save that, and then it's uploaded there. The children can then come back to it, write on it, and do those different bits and pieces. From there then, if you've created the reading record, you'll want to share it. Now, I've shown you how the children can upload their comments, but obviously once you've made something, that looks a little bit like this, then you'll want to share it to the children so that they're able to actually write things. So here, we're going to go to the option to share. Now, here is where you can add people in, but what I tend to use is this, which is copy link to clipboard, and then I can just share it through my Google Classroom or Seesaw or share it through an email. You can share it directly onto Google Classroom, but I actually find it sometimes quicker just to share the link. So privacy is also really important. You can have it as just pure private so no one can access it. Password is great if you're a bit worried about the privacy so the children have to write a password, but then bear in mind that some children will type in the password wrong. Or public, don't touch that one that goes through to gallery that was on a previous part before. So you're just gonna keep it on secret and you'll want to make sure it's on this part here which is children can write. If you keep it on, children can read, they won't be able to do anything with it. And sometimes I've had that before where I've accidentally pressed children can read and they've not been able to do it. Don't press children can edit because then they can delete whole days. You don't want that. So children can write. So they're only able to add in comments and videos and things like that. They're only able to add things in. So then back, we're going to copy the link. As you can see there, it's copied in. And yeah, I can share that through Seesaw, emails, school websites, school Facebook pages if you have those. Whatever you choose to share that through, then the children are able to write onto that. And as and when the children start to add those different ideas, it becomes really collaborative because the other children can see each other's posts and it's fantastic for that reason. Now, if you've created something that looks a little bit like this and you think, oh, I know, Miss Smith next door, she would really benefit from seeing this reading record, then what you're going to do is you're going to go to Remake. Now, if you've shared it with them, they'll click onto it and you'll encourage them to click remake. They'll remake it and it will go to their account. If we press remake, then you can either just copy the design or if for some reason they need all of the different posts to share it as an example, they can also copy the posts and lots of different things they can change the titles and bits and pieces like that. So there's lots of different functionality available with Padlet, but the reading record is something that my children really do enjoy. So that marks the end of the online reading record tutorial using Padlet. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have, feel free to like it. That's always really appreciated. If you are new to the channel, then a huge welcome and subscribe to the channel. I know that 90% of the people who watch this channel are not yet subscribed, so feel free to do that too. In addition, if you make one of these reading records, feel free to share that with me. I love seeing all the different creative ideas that you have, and I'll be completely honest, sometimes I use them with my class too. This platform is all about being collaborative, and it's fantastic for educators to share their ideas too, so please do that. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. For now, I'm out.